Hello, hello, friends. Welcome to Ask Me Anything. It is my weekly show where I coach other hairstylists, small business owners on things that they're, uh, roadblocks they're having and struggles they're having in their own business. Today, I'm going to host Tasha. So as soon as she gets here, I'm going to bring her on camera. And I can't wait, can't wait to help her out. She is looking to incorporate uh, new services into her business and has a few questions about it. Woohoo, Tasha is here. I'm going to bring you live. So excited. I just sent you an invite, Tasha. Can you see me? Can you hear me? I'm so excited. Hello, Tasha. How are you? Yes, how are you? Thank you so much for coming live. I'm so good. Thank you. This all worked out. This was easy, easy bree breezy. <laughs> I've been sweating, making sure Ooh. I get on here right. <laughs> you did it. Awesome. How's your day okay, going? Great. Huh? How's your day going? So far, so good. You know, because I'm in Florida, I was like working on this an hour ago. Oh, yes. And I'm I like, why can't change. I get on? Why can't I get on? And it dawns to me, like, we're on two different time zones. So I right. was in Jupiter, you were in Saturn. Yes. But we're here now. We made it. We made it. Well, okay. Yes. Cool, cool, cool. So let's get started, Tasha. And you'd prefer Natasha or Tasha? It's fine. Either way. Don't, no okay, pressure. Cool. Tasha okay, awesome. Tasha. Okay, cool. So what you had sent to me, so I'm just going to repeat your question and tell me if you want, if it's, if we need to add anything or, you know, if there's more uh, thoughts to it once I actually um, repeat it. You okay. said, uh, I have a new service that I have not yet had a lot of practice with. However, I have someone inquiring about the service. How, do I, how can I communicate this to the client without discouraging the client and how or should this be a free service? Did I get that right? You did. Okay, cool. Now tell me, okay, cool. Tell me, Tasha, what is the actual service that you're referencing? Just so we can give more, get more specifics. Like what is the, the, um, the service? Okay. So it's installing, um, lace front wigs. Okay, great. That's really and hot right now. Awesome. So you know how to do it. You're new at it and you just haven't had a lot of experience with it. And you're, you have a client asking you, um, to do it, this service on her. Correct. Okay. Or and how? Event. Not like a not like a red carpet event, but she's going to like they going on a vacation. Okay, cool. And I don't want to miss the opportunity. Of course, you're an entrepreneur. We always look for ways yeah, to make money. I don't want to seize the opportunity. You know what I mean? Because I might could actually do a great job, but I am a little hesitant because I'm not confident in the service enough to really. Do it on someone and be like, I know I'm gonna do such an excellent job. I'm gonna wow her. So fair, and you have a, a reputation, right? And you have a reputation to withhold. Yeah. So you don't want to do something exactly. where the client doesn't look good or it messes up her real hair or whatever the deal is. Totally understandable. Yeah. And how often, you know, what's not a lot of practice? Is it you've done it twice? You've done it twenty times? You, you know, what's a like? What's a what's considered quote unquote not a lot of practice for you? Well, I've only done it once or twice on myself. Okay. I've never really charged anyone to do it. So maybe like twice on myself, once on my daughter. No okay. strangers. Got it. And a scale okay. of one to 10, 10 being, um, what's a service that you're super confident in right now that you do all the time? Like short haircuts. Okay. So that's like, let's yeah, say like a one pixie, to 10. Like pixie styles. Okay, cool. So out of one to 10, a pixie haircut um, in, in regards to confidence, are you a 10? Yes. Okay. And with this new service you want to incorporate, what, where would you say your number is? I mean, are we a five? Is it a seven? I would say today it's probably about a four or five, I want to okay. say. So you know, really. Now, I, I, I can sometimes underestimate myself. That's exactly where I'm going with okay. this. Yeah. Exactly. Sometimes I'm really, really hard on myself. I've done styles like in a salon where everyone is like, oh my God, that was great. And I'm in my mind, I'm going like, I've never done that before in my life. But clearly I did a good job because no one else could pick up on that. So winging it, I've done that before. I'm just a little nervous about it. I love this. This is so fun. Okay. That's exactly why I wanted a number. Cause I wanted to see where you're at. If you're like a one, cause not that good and not a lot of practice as stylists, we are perfectionists. I'm not sure if that makes us a really good stylist or we become perfectionists because we are stylists. I'm not sure how that works, but 
we tend to be very hard on ourselves. We're perfectionists. It's, it's so common. I see this common thread in people that I work with inside this group, inside my programs. I myself, I say I'm a recovering perfectionist. So, you know, I'm, I'm always, I'm working on it. So we think like I can look at a haircut up to and be like, that's not perfect, but the client is ecstatic with it. So that's where I want to know where your number was at. So there's two ways you can go about this. Because you're at a five and you've done it a couple times, even though it was on a, you know, a family member and yourself, I don't think you should do it for free. You are, it's, it's, so this is the reason why I want to know exactly what you, this other service was, because I didn't know what it was. I didn't know if it was something completely removed. I'll just give you myself for an example. I'm a hairstylist. I specialize in, you know, um, clipping extensions and hot fusion extensions, cold fusion extensions. However, I also do a service called wardrobe editing. So I, that's a completely one off of the actual profession and the license that I have. So for okay. you, it's under the umbrella. It's under the hair umbrella. So with that okay. being said, I wouldn't do anything for free, uh, you know, unless there's one thing, reason why I would. I'll give you that mo example in a moment when I did my own business. But for sure, because it's under the umbrella of you being a stylist, and this is under what you know and your license, what you pay for every year, this should not be for free. So that's one thing. That's my opinion. Okay. And the way I incorporate a new service is one of two ways. Okay. So I just want to say that. The other thing is, so you could do two things. So you could actually ask a client. Okay. So let's hold that person that wants the service done from you up on the side for just a moment. What you could do is I'll just use myself as an example because I've incorporated lots of outside passions, again, off of even the hair world, selling wigs, selling custom extensions, doing um, hair styling lessons. I guess that's still under the umbrella, doing wardrobe editing um, appointments, having at-home spa parties, home parties. So okay. some of those are like off of the topic of hair. But the okay. only people I didn't charge for was the first handful of people that I said, I will do this service for you for free. It's X amount of dollars. So it's a chunk of money per hour. So they knew what they were getting for free. I made up some random number. I thought, what's Perfect. worth my time? Okay. So Perfect. I told them that. And I said, but you have to, I'll do it for free, but you have to do a review for me afterwards. I get to use that information. I'm going to bring my assistant with me. We're going to record the whole thing. It's going to be okay. edited and you're going to let us use this on my website and my marketing material, that kind of thing. So okay. you can figure out how you want to do this. Depends how soon this client wants it done and how well you know her and things like that. So you could use this client as a, say, I'm going to do it for free. It's a new service I'm offering, you know, or say, I'm going to do it for 50% off. Like, let's say you would charge $200. You're going to charge a hundred. You could do one of those okay. two things. I feel like you have enough practice, even though it's a few people and you're a five out of 10 you're probably going to do great. If you feel comfortable, like, le like let's say you feel like you should charge $100. And if you were really good at it, you charge $100. Maybe you just charge her 50 And you just don't even say anything. Just say, oh, I'm going to do it. And you can even say, it's a newer service I've been doing. I'm so glad you asked for it. Ask, you know, to get it done and let's do it. So it's up okay. to you. Or if you can put her on hold for a little bit and find some people to practice this on and get some pictures and some videos and things like that. Not that it really matters for her because she really right. wants to pay you for it. Right. But for going forward, that's how you incorporate it into your business. You have okay. people that do it for free or a discounted price and you let okay. them, you know, they have to do the review for you. They have to let you video. They have to let you do reels. They have to let you tag them, all that. So how okay. does that feel as a strategy? I like that strategy. The, okay. the only the only disadvantage now is that I had to give her an answer that day. Right. So would you tell <laughs> when her I, when I posed the question to you? Yeah. She was like, "So are you gonna do it?" You know what I mean? Yes. And then she went as far. So she came by and she got her lashes done. Great. And she loved her lashes. So she was awesome. like, "Um, she sent me like praying hands because she was thinking it was a matter of I was booked." Mm -hmm. And so she sends these praying hands. She's like, could you please, please, please do me on Thursday? Like, I'll pay you whatever you need. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so much pressure, Gina. Give me an answer. Oh uh, yeah, right, right. I know. <laughs> it's so, me. It's, my coaching style, as you see, you're getting to know me now. And I was actually just coaching inside my monthly membership to one of my students inside one right. of my paid, pro paid programs. And she, I said to her, I said, Leilani, you know, I don't give answers. I give strategies, ideas, right. suggestions, examples, right. and then you make the decision. So uh, did you tell her yes or did you tell her no? Or what'd you do? So what I told her was, I was like, well, I love you so much. What I'm going to do for you is I'll do it for, and I already just incorporated a discounted price. I never really quoted Perfect. her a regular price. I just okay, gave great. her the impression for her because I loved her so much. 
Okay. I would just do it for a regular price. It would also include her lashes. Okay. And she's like, oh my God, thank you so much. So now I'm like, I got to deliver. Yes. And so you Fair actually did the service? Deliver. You've committed to it or you've actually done it? No, I committed to it. It'll, okay. This will take place Thursday. Okay, awesome. You'll have to let me know what happens. Okay, so with that okay. being said, okay, so good. I like this. So you, you jumped for it. You just did it. You're like, forget it. I'm going to do it. Yeah. I'm sure you're going to do fine. What I would recommend too is you feel like you're giving her a discount on price on this, correct? I feel if I, if I was at a 10, mm -hmm. yeah, I definitely wouldn't price it at this price point. Okay, so maybe let her know. Going Before forward, five, I think that the price point is fair. Okay, cool. Without okay. her knowing that I'm at a five. Exactly, right, right, exactly. Got it. Okay, okay, cool. And what you can do is what I'd recommend is just, just, just things to think about strategy wise. So after the fact, you're going to follow up with her and say, hey, how was the event? How was your hair? You're going to follow up with her, whether you text, email, or if you see her often enough, you can just ask her in person. But if you don't see her for a couple okay. months, then send her a text if you okay. communicate that way with your clients and they're comfortable responding that way. Some people do email, some people do phone calls, you know, whatever. And then we're going to find out how it is. And okay. then if she says she loves it, which is probably what she's going to say, I would still ask her for, say, hey, can you do a review for me on Yelp? Can I, can I send you a survey? Like, get some feedback. So okay. you have it in writing. She's already happy with it. And now you know what to correct if you need to. It's going on okay. what she's going to say about it. And then when she says this awesome thing on Google or Yelp for you, say, can I use that info? Do you mind? Can I post it on my Instagram account or put it on my website or whatnot? And then let her know if she's super happy with it and it worked great and you end up feeling really good about it, let her know that th th this is a new service I'm incorporating. This is, you know, I'm doing half off for now. I I'm so glad you liked it and whatever. But the news, the, the regular prices are X amount. So when she comes back again and again and refers to her friends, you don't want to do it at the less expensive price. We want to make sure it looks good. She likes it. She's giving you feedback because she's it's coming out of her head, her mouth, and she's writing it down saying how much I liked it. Of course, this is all if she's going with she liked it, which is probably going to be the case. But if not, we can fix it. You, you, you'll know what to do. And then you say, just so you know, it's $50. You're, this is new, new service. Want to make sure you loved it, but not going for it, it's, it's 75 or whatever it is. So you don't feel down the road that like, oh, darn it. Now she's sending me all her friends because I've done that myself and before. And I'm like, right, now I'm that $25 girl. Like, no. Exactly. And you're not. <laughs> right. You're expensive, but worth it.com. That's what right. I always say. You deliver okay. all of the styles I work with are amazing. Even if they're newer, they're, they're talented and they have so much to offer. Most of us okay. people in creative fields, especially stylists, we undercharge. And I don't want people undercharging because we give so much. We work so hard. We're so talented. And the last people on earth that should be undercharging are hairstylists. So that's why I created an entire nine-week program about it because I'm obsessed with hairstylists, specifically, you know, in the beauty world, specifically hairstylists, business owners, creating the income and working the schedule and work with the clients and offering services that they love and they feel fair and happy and all that stuff about. So. Okay. Okay. And, now, do you do any marketing about this with this uh, service yet? Have you done, has any of these, have you done any of this before? No, because in, initially my plan was to do exactly what you suggested. I was going to start getting more practice. You know, I was going to build the confidence. Great. I kept delaying it though. I kept and, putting it off. I kept saying, well, I'm going to do this first, then I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this first. Mm -hmm. And then when a day came, I'm like, I knew this day was going to come where someone was going to ask for this service and I was not going to be ready because if I stay ready, I don't have to get ready. But now I have yes. to get ready and I feel like it's an emergency now. I love this. Yeah, I love this. Clarity doesn't come from thought. It comes from action. So right. you want to do things before you're completely ready. And you're, a, again, you're not going off and doing nails. You're a licensed no. stylist. This is under the umbrella. So, you know, right. maybe you don't have a lot of experience with it, but you have enough where, and, and someone's asking you for it. So that's enough right yeah. there. And you're a five right. out of 10. You're not a one or a two. So I feel like this is going to go really good. And I am super okay. excited to hear what happens. You'll have to let me know. Now, <laughs> let's talk about that a little bit more, if you, if you don't mind, with just mindset around starting something new starting something before you're ready is this the does this come up often for you or is this just something it's been a while like tell me a little bit more about that because sometimes if we can get ourselves out of that we could this won't trip us up the next time we want to incorporate something new in our business well i think I, I, I recall and i know you talk to a lot of stylists but i expressed to you the first time me and you spoke 
I'm one of those stylists that keep going back to corporate because it's safe. Yes. I know how much my check is going to be if I do those 40 hours, even though I know I'm conscious that if I put in the same amount of devotion to my own business, I could probably double that every week. Right. But I'm still dealing with that fear yep. of letting go of that security blanket which doesn't really allow me the freedom to really focus on my own business. Exactly. So I'm all, I feel like I'm always kind of starting and yes. not mastering anything. You know what I mean? Right. I'll, I'll get really good at something and everyone is like cheering me on. And then if the office start pulling me away, then I'll stray away. Then I'll look up. It'll be two months, three months, yep. four months now. Clients are fading out. Only one or two is sticking around. And I have to start this process all over again so here i am again yep trying to start the process all over again this time i really want to be devoted this time i really want to see it through this time i want to believe that it's different yes i want to believe that <laughs> i really do yes um I, I really really do but yeah i'm kind of still at that always kind of starting i'm i'm never allowing myself to get to that tent to go all because in. I'll get to like about a seven or an eight, and as soon as I build up my confidence, something to come and derail that, and yeah. I'll think that I can get back on, and I'll just pick up at a seven again. But every time I restart, I feel like I'm kind of starting over. I come back with a little less self esteem, like yeah, because I feel like people will feel like you should be further along than where you at, and they may not be thinking that, but that's usually the way I feel. And that puts more pressure on me because I feel like I'm supposed to deliver at a certain level. And so I kind of shy away from it all together. Understandable. And I appreciate you sharing that, especially on live camera. And you are not alone. There are so many people I can, I can name off 10 people in my program just right now that feel the same way. So you're not alone. Right. I've been in your shoes before. Sometimes it's just a matter of taking that leap. Uh, Nina says in here, take that leap girl. So okay. why do you think, why do you think, do you have any clarity on why that is? Like, do you feel like it's like you're not around enough like-minded people? Is there someone not holding you accountable? Is it like, do you have any specifics on what the issue is there? Do you I not have clarity probably, on your goals? Maybe? Probably a combination of a little bit of all of what you said and yeah. a lack of accountability. I mean, I've been around stylists that maybe wanted to be um, in business for themselves, mm -hmm. yet we just couldn't find that ability to be a community because yep. it was that competition versus yes. there's enough clients for everyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like one Fair. person can do everyone. Uh, so exactly. we couldn't really kind of get on board with one another. Everybody okay. still was kind of like on their own little ice. Yep. So you know okay. stylists, but we're not really networking with each other. So I, I will say that's one of the things that I haven't really found my community yet. Okay. I so, haven't found my tribe yep. of stylists and um, business-minded stylists who don't mind sharing and don't mind learning and don't feel like we're going to be taking from one another right. by sharing and learning. You know what I mean? Because the thing is, that, what state, you live in Florida. How could we, how could you and other people that are like in the, in the community that I'm in, you know, there's people all over the states. No one's competition because we don't even live near each other. So right. yes, so definitely you're right. saying accountability is one thing and then also being with other people to see that like you're not doing it wrong or she's got that idea and inspires you or this one, you know, you might even talk together and like do some sort of collaboration, something to right. hold you accountable and get excited around a certain group because being right. a, a business owner is isolating. So I think the biggest Very thing lovely. that the most, um, I feel like the, the biggest thing that's worked for me is to be around other like-minded people, be in programs, take my own online courses. I'm in monthly memberships. I pay a lot of money for two separate okay. memberships that I'm constantly around someone, a mentor who's done, been there, done that, who's ahead of okay. what I'm doing. And I'm also with other people that are trying to do the same thing. So inside okay. my programs, you've probably heard of Glamorous Academy. I have my monthly membership. That's exactly what it's about. It's about you clarifying your goals, so having that okay. clarity, having the accountability. It's a, it's a DM every week for me. Hey, we got group coaching, and it's also right. being around other people that are doing those thoughts that you're having. Like Nina was saying, take that leap, girl, and other people that are in the group, in the program together, all spending the money, all taking the time every week in group coaching for nine weeks. 
you feel like you're with someone else who feels the same way, who's been there, right. who's done that, who's in the same right. boat. So your thoughts, your fears, your, you know, I'll call them insecurities are the same as the next four people. And the other two people that don't have it already been there or they will be there. So I think that's one of the biggest things is to be around a group of like-minded people. So you're in this private Facebook group. So just keep hanging out in here and hopefully this will help get you the ball rolling with this little, little mini coaching call a extra push for confidence and excitement and accountability and, you know, seeing people in here cheering you on. So that kind of thing is such a big deal. So um, I, I'm just, I'm excited for you and I'm happy to hear about what happens on, on Thursday. You'll have to let us know. Ooh, I'm scared. <laughs> you can do it. While yeah. I have you on the call, can you think of anything else that will, that you, that you're like, I kind of have a roadblock with this thing. I wish I knew more about this. Or I wish I could do this more. Is there anything while we're on the call that I can help you out with? Because I'm sure whatever your question is, someone else in here has the same question. <laughs> Okay, so in reference to me probably holding myself to an invisible standard, I'm going to say, and, and when I say this invisible standard, it, it, it's solidified more like, let's say I go to a home to a family reunion, mm -hmm. to family members who haven't seen me in years. Okay. Their expectation is like, oh, you're probably doing all this grand stuff in the beauty industry. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I work 40 hours at. And they're like, I'm confused. So that's when I really kind of feel the pressure. Like, what have I been doing with my time? Like, everyone else seen this potential that I clearly didn't see myself because I'm sitting at a cubicle at some, you know, someone's desk when I should have been working for myself. So... Right now, it's like, how do I start where I have to start and not start where I feel like I should be starting? Ooh, that's a really good, you know, good question. Where do you, what are, what is the, what are the, what are they to you? Where is it that you feel like you should be? And where is it that you want to be with starting? You tell me. And then we're going to work on getting you the first step in where you want to start. So... Right now, I have a, a studio in my home, mm -hmm. private room in my home is set up, everything. I mean, Great. I have ring light. I have everything that I need. Great. However, <laughs> I don't take any photos. Oh. Okay. There's um, no marketing. I'm, I'm very personable with the clients. I'm yeah. on time. All, you know, I, I got that business aspect of it. One, because I've been in corporate, so I kind of transfer those mindsets sure. yep. you know what I'm saying that mm -hmm. but work ethic to being the work, a business that's owner the word I'm looking mm -hmm. for I transferred that work ethic into Great. being uh, a, a personal business owner however I know that there are things like taking the pictures and making sure the lighting is good and that finish that polish portion yep. of the business I feel yep. like I may even need a, an assistant who can take that by the rings and they kind of know they know what needs to be done like I don't really follow Instagram and all of that so I don't really I kind of know when I see something if I like it yep but I don't necessarily know how to navigate to get there and you're referencing specifically pictures and videos that you'd be sharing online to promote yourself correct yeah just yeah just okay. just keeping like you know a facebook page or an instagram page fresh and you know what i mean just for people to be able to go and say oh okay this is what she do i know makes it's you more legitimate hard. so you feel like it will make you more legitimate if you could be having stuff online but you're not doing it because you feel like you need someone else to help or whatever it's not the perfect situation for you to just start and so you're not starting that okay it. cool i feel this... like i need the perfect okay. team of people to Got help it. me and it's like where are they Where's my community? And you know where your community there's is? No community, there's no start. The community is you right there in your home. It's Pretty you, much. yourself, and I. So okay. great. Okay, so this is where you feel you want to be, and this is what you want to start on, correct? Correct. So let's break it down real, don't, let's not get overwhelmed. Let's make it real simple here. What's, um, what social media account are you comfortable posting on what, yeah, what account are you comfortable posting on? Is it Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn? What is it? Well, I would say I'm the most 
comfortable with Facebook only because I had a That's little okay. more practice. Great. And do you but feel then, like, are there any past, present, or potential future clients following you on your Facebook page? Whether it's yes. your personal or your, okay, great. Awesome. So like a handful yeah. of people that you know that have Not been going to you. Handful. Great. Right. That's all we need. We need one account, oh. a handful of people. That's it. Oh, okay. Could you, how often do you post in there about your business right now? Zero. Okay, cool. Would you be comfortable <laughs> starting happened. once a week for a month posting on there? Could we, could once we. Once a week for a month? I'm going to give you, but I'm not going to drop you off. Of... I'm going to tell you, I'm okay. going to give you suggestions, but okay. Let's okay. answer that question after the fact. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. Let, we'll start, start with one account once a week. That's if you say you're, you're into it after I give you a few suggestions about what to actually share on there. Okay. So do you have any testimonials out there on Yelp or Google or any, anywhere? Any, even from a text message, like a feedback from a client that says, oh my gosh, I love my hair. Thank you so much. It stayed all night, blah, blah, blah. Any, is there I anything? think I have one on Facebook. Okay, great. So we're going to take that info. Do you have a picture of that client? That she's right, that you're Probably on Facebook. Okay. And did you post Already that like a while Facebook. ago? Okay, cool. Did yeah. you post it recently or a while ago? No, this was probably about two years ago. Okay, great. So we're going to reuse it. We're going to recycle oh. that bad boy. <laughs> okay. you, as a side note, I'm on 13 different platforms. I email my list every week and I do a podcast every week. Do you think okay. I come up with new stuff six to seven times? I did. That's exactly I, what I thought. I repurpose all that stuff. <laughs> I okay. repurpose everything. Okay. I put it on Instagram one day, it goes on Facebook two days later, you know, a week after that it goes somewhere else. It starts over. Oh, so so Okay. So okay. this exact video, I will reach out to my VA, my virtual assistant, Trish. She'll take the recording, put it on my podcast in like three weeks from now. And then this okay. recording, not the video, just the sound, and I'll put a little bio about what it's about and we'll have that there. So I repurpose, uh, this will go on uh, YouTube as well. This will be in this face Facebook group. So we're going to talk about repurposing. We're just going to use that one post that you have from two years ago with that one client. It's okay. still relevant, correct? It's still a service you right. offer. It's a clear still picture. Service. It's a yes. great fee feedback. You're going to repost that. That's going to be your first one you're going to do, one, one per week. So that's the first okay. thing. Now, this is if you agree to it. You don't have okay. to. I'm just give you suggestions. So that's one. Okay. Believe me, Tasha, once the ball starts get rolling, if you could do this once a week for a month, you, the, you, it'll start rolling. Now, another okay. thing, you do pixie cuts. Could you, is there, because I, I want you to talk about your services that you offer and let people see you're the expert in pixie cuts. So okay. would you be comfortable grabbing a, since you don't have a, do you have a pixie cut picture of a client you've done or friend or family member, I, anybody? I'm old, uh, also old. Okay. I never take so, pictures. Like they leave and okay. I'm like, why did not I take a picture today? That's okay. We're just, we're, that's okay. We're going to start where okay. you're at. I'm going to meet okay. you right where you're at and give you okay. coaching and suggestions on where you're at. Okay. Okay. So what you could do is I've done this myself. I wanted to talk about a top knot. I wanted to give three steps on how to do a top knot. I didn't have a good picture. I went online. I saw Gwen Stefani had a blonde, big, full top knot, put her picture on my page, did step one, two, and three, how to put it, do a top knot yourself and just wrote it out. Okay. Okay. So could you okay. find a okay. cute so pixie cut? So it doesn't always have to be your personal work. Exactly. Right. Well, you're not okay. saying I styled uh, Halle Berry's hair. Right. You're just showing an example of what a pixie cut looks like. Right. Gotcha. Okay. I mean, okay. I can, I, we could sit here for three hours. I can give you suggestions, but these are just a couple. So let's say okay. this, so this that week. Excellent one. I would definitely never thought of that. Okay, okay. good. And then the third, so that's week one, week two, week three. Um, What's something else that you specialize in? Or what's, what's it here? How about this? I'm going to ask, what's um, also, a question? What's a question your clients, I take that back. What's a question your clients always ask you? Like Tasha, how do I blah, blah, blah my hair? Curl it, tease it, straighten it. Is there anything you can think of that they ask you? It's, it's two people have asked you. you. Well, usually if I have a client that's asking me about um, them participating in their Hair care is more or less about the health of the hair. Okay. Usually they don't want to style. They're saying, I don't know anything about hair. That's why I'm coming to you. Okay. So the, the so they just rely completely on my expertise. So it's usually maybe like my hair is dry. Like if they have natural hair, you Great. know, poorly hair. Okay. It tends to be leaned toward the dry. Neck. Okay. 
So usually that would be, I would say, probably the most common question that I'll get, like, how can I get my hair to retain moisture? There you go. Better hydration, that type Great. of thing. So the third week, what you're going to do is, and again, the, anytime, as you can see, with this topic that you and I are talking about right now, I don't come up with content by myself. I ask, what are my students asking me? What is someone inside this private Facebook group? That's the content I write. That's what I write about. I created, recorded okay. two Reels videos because I'm camera ready. Camera ready means I have hair and makeup on, you know, hair and makeup, cute outfit. I recorded two Reels in between coaching my students in my paid program before I came here. Now I'm probably going to okay. use some of this verbiage of the things that I'm helping you with as a Reels for, to help someone else with. So think uh -oh. about the things that your clients are asking you. So how, what do I do about dry hair? So the third week, you're going to post about dry hair. You're going to put in quotes, Tasha, what do I do about dry hair, my dry hair? Like whatever your client says exactly. And say, okay. so many of my clients asked me this. This is what okay. I recommend. It might be even coming in to see you. It might be buying this product. It might be getting trimmed. You know, whatever it is that your advice would be to them. Okay. And then what's another, uh, uh, Nina, Nina in here is saying, talk about your favorite product and why you would use it. I love that. And so here, there's another one. Do you sell products to your clients at all? I do not. I have considered okay. that, but no, I do not. Okay, but you can even talk about your favorite shampoo and conditioner and why you love okay. it so much or, or okay. a flat iron or a round brush or whatever it is. So that okay. could be week four. Or what was your okay. other favorite um, service that you offer? What's another service aside from the pixie cut? Hair extensions. Okay, and what type? Um, Clip-ins, sew-ins. Okay, uh, yeah. well, let's talk about sew-ins. Do, do you happen to have a picture, okay. even if it's an old picture of a client with the sew-ins, like a before and after? Well, no. Oh, you mean I was about to say my hair is a sewing, but um, oh, but you would have to do, if I do, do it yourself. I do have one. Do you want to see it or are you just asking me? In no, I'm just asking if you have one. I have it. I do okay, have great. a sewing. So you're going to take okay. a sewing. Is it a before and after picture? It's old. Um, I think I do have her hair just like blown out. You can't see her face just okay. after Perfect. I blew her hair out and then the finished product. No problem. So if, whatever picture I you have. I was going to try to do a video. Okay. I didn't, that didn't go so well. Okay. That's okay. We're just getting you, we're going to work with what you have. I don't want you to create okay. all these videos. I mean, it'd be, that's step two. We're on step one or maybe that's step three. Okay. okay. So okay. I would recommend doing videos and reels and all that for someone who's already, already regularly showing up online to promote themselves. We're getting you starting at square one. I want to keep it really oh, simple, okay. really easy with one a, a, a platform you're comfortable showing up on and two, um, content that you already have, like these pictures we're referencing. We're going to steal a pixie cut from, you know, Halle Berry, a cute pick of her okay. with her pixie cut or whatever. But so okay. the fourth week, you could talk about the extension. So the thing is with your own hair, you don't put them in your own hair, right? Someone else right. does them. No, I do. Right. So, okay. okay. You put them in yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, okay. Well, then you can even talk about that. But I, I would say <laughs> if you, ha you have a picture of someone Okay. That you already did it on. So ju just use that. And um, okay. use that. And you're going to talk about the benefits of getting that type of extension. And you can even say in okay. there, I am a client. Of, I love wearing them myself. And this is okay. how often I do it. Just talk as if you had a client in front of your chair. But like, here's the four, five benefits of getting a sewing extension. Or here's the okay. five, you know, here's the five most frequently asked questions. How long do they last? Can I wash my hair? You know, what do I do when they outgrow? Do they slip out? Do they damage their hair? Whatever the questions are. So now you have four weeks of content to post on your Facebook account that you're comfortable posting on for every week for a month. So Tasha, I'm going to ask you the question again. Can you commit to posting once a week on your Facebook account by using these ideas that we talked about? I can. Okay, cool. Yay. I can because you gave me a formula. Yes. I'm not going to drop it. I just feel like, figure confident it out. in. Okay, cool. And excited about? I'm extremely excited because okay, that yes. has been like the missing thing is I felt like I didn't have the formula. Right. And now you do. So you, you have know, so many like ideas. I want to say bread, but I don't know what all, of, all the ingredients that go in and I just don't want it to come out as a big rock. So I just rather not bake the bread. But right. you done gave me the ingredients. I know I can cook. So all I got to do is get in there and you know what I'm saying? And watch yes. it and mix it right. Yes. I just didn't know before how to do it. Right. And so this is just getting the, giving you some strategies where you're comfortable starting at. 
and getting you to be okay. accountable and giving you specific ideas. You can write the verbiage yourself. Like I don't, I don't do so in extensions. I wouldn't even know what to say about it, but I can talk okay. extensions in general, but you're the expert. Remember that Tasha, you are the expert. Okay. You are showcasing not only what you know online, your knowledge and your expertise, but also you're helping people out who want to maybe get so in extensions. And if you don't get one new client from those four posts, then I don't know what I'm doing and I'm going to quit coaching hairstylists. Like I can't imagine you wouldn't get at least one new client from those four posts. And when someone comments in there and they're asking questions, make sure you're engaging, make sure you're commenting back, make sure you're giving them information. Even if it's like, that looks pretty. I love that. Make sure you're responding. Say, thank you so much. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. And there's all different strategy. I could go with the comments and getting them in your chair, but let's just start with where you're at right now. And then okay. you let me know once you've done it and you let me know how Thursday goes with your client. I will. Okay, great. So, um, come back thank to this so thread much. here and just type in here so we, then we know what's, so it's all in one spot so other people can see like what your progress is. Okay, was. you want me to give you feedback, go back to this Go back video. to this video, yeah, and just be like, hey, okay. Gina, I did the thing, I worked out this client, here's before and after, I'm showing up, you know, whatever, okay. just keep it in here so we can always revisit okay. it. So like in a little organized spot. Okay, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm so I happy for you. Am. I, I, I can <laughs> I'm tell. So excited. You seem so much more excited. I'm excited for you. I, I can am, feel the I'm ready. I yes, I'm, re I'm, I'm ready. You know what I mean? I'm really, really, yes. really ready. I, I really am. I swear I am. And I'm glad that I met you. Because you kind of like, even sometimes you send like those texts. Yep, the weekly it texts. Puts, it, it, it sparks a little little fire under my <laughs> ass because I might that day be like, oh, wow. maybe and you'll send something and I'm like, wow, okay, no more excuses. <laughs> like, let's get this going, girl. Yeah. I love that. I'm so happy to be in your world and getting to know you. And I'm so excited to see what happens with these next few weeks. Okay. Thank you so much, okay. Gina. Okay. You're welcome. Have a good day, Tasha. See you soon. All right. Same to you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> See you. Okay, bye. Thank you, friends, for watching. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for watching the replay. Uh, I'm going to share this in the group now, so please watch it again if you already watched it. Thank you, friends, for who, who's been in here commenting, and thank you, Tasha. Have a good night, my friends. Mwah.